Hello viewers and welcome again to another edition of a program called Salon Together Issues with me Sila Kem Takabo. Today we can have the Sierra Leone Red Cross Society for her get an interview with the Secretary General. Let it tell we the challenges we did on face, the success stories and the operation of the Sierra Leone Red Cross Society. So stay with me as we go do, as we go dig deep inside Salon Trending Issues. Hello and welcome to this interview. Go please introduce yourself to viewers. Thank you very much. I am Paolo Sandi, Secretary General of the Sierra Leone Red Cross Society. Yes, Mr. Secretary, we don't know the Red Cross now and also the country. So I want to give you as a small background about the Red Cross operation of Sierra Leone. All right. So many, many years ago, we've been getting um, influenza outbreak in Sierra Leone. So we colonial masters we've been there, the British people them, then we then come together, then form a social welfare organization for help women them, for help picking them. Then she said this organization succeed. It makes some great impact. Because of that, then decide say, let them establish them as a branch of the British Red Cross. So they officially established them as a branch of the British Red Cross in 1937. So again, the branch of British Red Cross been based in Freetown, and it been to create so much impact. So because of that, then decide for establish provincial branches. So they establish another branch in Kenima, Makeni, and Bo. And then in 1962, the government of Sierra Leone officially, by an act of parliament, established the Sierra Leone Red Cross Society. From 1962. We don't be established as an auxiliary to government for support the government in all humanitarian activities where we don't do all through these 60 years. So essentially, you know, that not the Red Cross. Well, now we talk more about the donor branches, the branches that we evolve inside the Red Cross society. I want to name them branch there for we. All right. So the Red Cross, the we established first Lila mentioned say Red Cross na international movement. We get across now 192 countries across the world. And we come together and waiting and call International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Waiting old we together now, what we call seven fundamental principles. Part of them fundamental principles, we get the principle where we talk about the establishment of one national society in a country where for cover all the territory of that country and it will be open to everybody in that country there. So that means say Sierra Leone Red Cross for be established not just in Freetown, but for cover the entire territory of Sierra Leone. Consistent with Ande, we get branches now every administrative district of the country. So essentially, if I for name them, I they name every district because we then are every district. And the other important thing now that we get a network of volunteers. Currently, we get over 18,000 registered volunteers across the entire country in communities where sometimes hard to reach, difficult places. We still we presence the day. So now that they make the Red Cross, when disasters happen, we normally can be the first people for day on the scene because we volunteers they already they within the communities. So we they pride ourselves for being the first in and the last out because we didn't have the communities already. So now that kind of network Red Cross established. Every district and every community we get volunteers. And this not the structure in Salonaya but also in other countries where Red Cross Day. So then you make mention of volunteers them you see when I get eighteen thousand volunteers them all around the country. So how wanna come about for get the volunteers there? Who's kind of people wanna look for? Alright, so like where I say it will be open to everybody, every class of um, of human beings with dinner salon, whether they are Sierra Leoneans or non Sierra Leoneans, as long as they decide now for be open, whether they get physical challenges or not, whatever the age group, it will be children, youth, adults. So, what can happen first? We can begin with school clubs. All schools, primary schools, secondary schools, we get with school clubs, we we'll get them, picking them together, we begin to teach them the values of the Red Cross, and we begin to engage them in humanitarian activities. We also go to communities where they establish mother's clubs, bring all the mama them together. We get father's clubs, again, and enough for bringing them together for humanitarian purposes. So we they really target everybody, all classes, all ages, all cadres of our society. 
Now we now begin the attention small to the emergency response they will not don't they do. And different outbreaks that don't happen at the country like we talk about the Ebola, the Corona. So whose mechanism we can put in place for make sure say we not can always be the first for reach another sites than the way disaster can happen. All right. So um, the first thing we any institution need for able for maintain that kind ability for do emergency response now the capacity of your teams so firstly as red cross we major focus now for build capacity of we staff and we volunteers so when we get them volunteers then join the red cross we not they just get them listed as volunteers the first thing we want for do now for invest in them begin for train them so they build them up in different things disaster response psycho psychological first aid first aid Aid, um, blood donation, everything necessary for perform with humanitarian functions so they build their capacity. So when disasters can happen of any nature, whether a natural disaster or public health emergency like the outbreaks them, we get volunteer them. We already trained for respond to them kind of thing and so we they just activate them depending on what thing happen so like for example the most recent one now the flooding we happen over um, the past weekend we get volunteers then by the time me even get the information with volunteers they already been there at the scene we train for respond to them kind of issues then they so now so they across the country we get trained volunteers in different fields ready for respond to any emergency so again generally on the um, public health issues with salon non face we we see how, especially the Ebola outbreak, we see how we volunteers then take a major role, not just in safe and dignified barrier, but also psychosocial support, um, 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 social mobilization, going to communities, engaging them. So, Daniel and the we don't they do, and we will continue for do. Okay, and you know, see Red Cross now and our soon name now the country. So, what are the different projects that we on not embark on? Presently, and the one most the one the way Unami don't do, and the one they want to get planned for do in the future. Then put the project to them. I want to talk small about them. Okay. So, we don't over the years, like I said, we don't take 60 years established as a Red Cross Society. We don't do several projects, all geared towards empowering with communities, building resilience in these communities, um, um, ensuring we provide much needed services to people them way they not place this way um hard for leave all right so no some of the project they don't include um like we health project has been big with community-based health program done in a project we've been in a every district and in many communities so what do they do with that they would they do with the gun and then communities that will begin sensitize them on basic hygiene disease prevention hygiene promotion with the good one and then communities then they for example basic thing like the village the way some of we come on where you book you close they just put on a gun and, and spread and, and you grass them but with the gun and then community say no this is not right let we do cloth line we they go in our communities, they not get fine water for drink. We do water well for them. They not get toilet. We help them for build toilet in a way that they go able for maintain them. Even the water wells them, we train them. If the pump get problem, how then they able for maintain them? How then for they put resources together for ensure say, even if we cost not they, then for able for keep them alive. So we health project has been very big, covering all the districts and impacting millions of Sierra Leoneans across the country. We also get with disaster response program we don't de respond to disasters as everybody in this nation goes certainly don't see we don't de respond to all kinds of disaster and this now one of we core functions and now one of we core departments with disaster response where we always continuously de try for improve and nowadays we de work with the national disaster response agency um, and we get a very strong um, relationship with them because we now auxiliary to government we really establish for support them so that that's another strong thing we don't do. We also don't they invest a lot on livelihoods. Find out, say, plenty of time where disasters happen, people and they lost their livelihood. And unless somebody come for help them, it's difficult for some of them for recover. So we, did, we don't they do a lot of investment in livelihoods, helping communities with skills, tools, and the needed resources for investing in agriculture and for keep them in a sustainable way. We also don't they help some of them with skills them, you know, some of them we don't do train some of them in carpentry, masonry, and lots of skills 
use them, we go empower them for get sustainable source of livelihood. And we also currently they invest a lot on um, resilience, community building, community resilience. We actually encompass everything. Talks about health, talks about gender related issues, talks about um, inclusion of every member of the community, especially financial inclusion of women and girls. Um, we do focus a lot on, and especially around Freetown, Nyaso. We also the focus on building people and capacity in different areas where necessary for their lives but also for for their communities so we get two separate resilience programs then one day happen around western area one day happen in the branches but all of it geared towards building this the capacity of we um, communities for able for respond to the challenges within the face with communities some of them are really challenged but how will they overcome those challenges how they're able to live in a very sustainable way to overcome them challenges and now we get also a very new program where we invest in climate change um, we, we 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 don't begin for support the actions of the government the government they do a lot of work with tree planting we serve the plant five million trees across a number of um, districts where we don't begin now and we'll work with different ministries environment and, and other ministries relevant to that purpose day and we did take a lot of technical advice for them. So essentially everything humanitarian across involved as long as it's a humanitarian issue we did it and we did make an impact. Now we talk small body funding. Usai Red Cross can get funded. That's an important question and I'm glad you say you ask them. So Red Cross in funding for we project them, we interventions them, we they get funding from we partners them. We um, we can call some of them sister national societies. For example, the British Red Cross, the resilience program we talk about now, Free Tongue, yeah? now the British Red Cross, the support we. The one the way they happen are the provinces, now the branches, we they get support from the Finnish Red Cross, we they get support from the Icelandic Red Cross, and then self get back donors where they support them. So essentially, we movement partners but also we get people outside the movement with the support Red Cross like right now um, we they get with the work with the government for do vaccine promotion we they get support from CDC for do vaccine promotion so um, from movement we mean to the Red Cross movement partners but also non-movement partners we can get funds another important source of funding for we where we don't the push for now the government because by we act government for the gift subvention to Red Cross and we partner them this being and then they ask we okay if we invest so much in Red Cross for building our capacity for help on our people what is the government doing when our government established but thankfully we government done the doing your part last year for the first time in 60 years Last year we get 50, um, 500 um, million leons. We now 50,000, I think, 50,000 in the new currency. So, and this year also we did very close to the point for get them. So, um, which is very impressive. We know you know sufficient at all for cover we call cost, but it's very important um, first steps in that direction of covering we call cost. So now now that way they will get funding. So now we talk small about the challenges then we you don't face since you assume office as the Secretary General of the Sierra Leone Red Cross Society. Well, um, we don't face a number of challenges. Firstly, we take office at a time where we just don't go through the Ebola crisis, and then the society go through a second crisis where they may call an integrity crisis because of the things that were happen during the Ebola. So then they affect you in a number of ways. Firstly, the transition not being smooth, not being normal. And we find ourselves in that position where plenty of the former staff then they care we go court and we've been getting a number of issues for address. But um, we we don't address a number of them and then they we also find ourselves in that position where as a result of those integrity issues, funding being became a challenge. So we not been get as much funding as we been get before the, the crisis. And uh, and you know if you don't go through an integrity crisis, you really get for do a lot of work for let people them re, for regain trust of you partners and donors. So we don't do a lot of essential work for build the foundations for trust and accountability. We make we partner them 
done, they invest back in we. Lots of improvement and then the more confidence for investing with society and in we people them. So that's a very important change with our own. And some of the other challenges we don't face connected to this one. Now the general don't of fatigue across the whole world. Um, things then they happen like recently we get a COVID outbreak. It affects the one that we now we do not pass we within Africa. So that means say much of the investment go back to their own country then. As we they try for recover from the COVID, we get the Ukraine crisis. We mean say as well, more of the money for go. So some of we do not they, they tell like then go tell we say it's really not a major priority right now. I mean, like we get the Africa food crisis. Well, you know, don't hit we as badly as it don't hit some other countries in Africa. But the Africa food crisis now is such an emergency way the whole world for don't come to and invest in. But it not attract as much funds as the Ukraine crisis. It's because, again, it's affecting the people that we don't give we all these years. So those are some of the challenges we don't face. And this being term, we do not have very reluctant for cover the core cost of the society. Like, thing that, like we generate our power, we internet, we vehicles maintenance, um, salaries of core staff. Then if then they do a program, they want for cover the program cost, the staff that we directly related to the programs, but not to the cost for keep the society alive. So for them, then things say, those are costs where the government and the national society for able for generate. So how do we generate those funds? Now we don't work on. So those are some of the challenges we don't try for address and we make progress, thankfully. Okay, so going forward, what do people for expect from Sierra Leone Coast Society? Well, going forward, people for expect a transformed national society we get capacity for respond to any kind of emergency. We know they pray for disasters and emergencies, but we know that we definitely get for continue forget disasters and for different reasons. So we need national institutions. We're strong and we get capacity for respond and not just for respond, but also for support communities through the recovery process. Not just something happened today, all my rush day and tomorrow I don't come on our news, we come on and no, we need institutions, we got the capacity for accompanying the communities through the recovery process. And, and that's where we stand out because we then are the communities before during and after disasters. So we we want for continue for build on that strength and for for attract every Sierra Leonean for be a member, a volunteer of the Red Cross. Because ultimately Sierra Leone Red Cross Society belongs to the Red Cross. One of the things that we we don't they do um, over the years now the area of supporting the hospitals with blood and we get a unique capacity for mobilized blood. If the government need blood now for a huge number of cases, then they call the Red Cross. Within hours, we get as much as they require because we get Sierra Leoneans we are willing to make that sacrifice for help them brothers. So how do we sustain that for motivate more Sierra Leoneans for join? Encourage more Sierra Leoneans for see reason why we need for help we say ultimately not to do no phone get for help with Sierra Leone. We have to come up to that place where we get for ready for help we say and make the sacrifices necessary. So we want for Red Cross strong, not just nationally but in every district to that point where we we government they rely on we Partners from outside go rely on the Red Cross for say then get an institution we strong enough for respond to any kind of emergency where the nation the face. So what will be the last word to viewers? So my last word to viewers will be for encourage everybody we don't listen to or watch this interview for find a way for become a member, for be a part. Red Cross they do an important job. If you know happen say now you self we don't help today. It's possible somebody in your family, somebody connected to you, 
Godon received some support from the Red Cross. That is made possible only because another Sierra Leonean choose for volunteer for offer a sacrifice. So if we all come together and offer we services, offer we, 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 we resources for help the Red Cross, it will also turn out for be help to Sierra Leone generally. So my last word will be for encourage every Sierra Leonean for be part. Find a way for be part, either directly by becoming a volunteer or encouraging some other person for becoming a volunteer or sending your resources for support people in need. Then they will be very helpful to Sierra Leone. Thank you so much. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. I'm grateful. Viewers, as Yusuf don't listen within the Secretary General of the Sierra Leone Red Cross Society, don't tell you, as you say, for the past 60 years, governments you know, may they fund them, but they don't begin to get fund from government. And also, they don't face in challenges them we then don't know the way and give them money. They take us as Sierra Leone not to priority country for now. And don't tell you, see, most of the success stories, the way they don't get to get cost, can be the first society, the first organization we can go on some disaster prone areas the way disaster can happen and they can be the last for commodity. And also they call on different Sierra Leoneans they know all come together for make sure say, we all volunteer for the Red Cross Society get the name where they want. Me Nasila Kemtakabo. Until then, tata.